Alright guys, Hi Fright here. I've got another special one for you today. This is the Julin Hao Jin Hong? Jin Hong? Jin? Jin? Oh, sorry guys, I'm butchering the name. Um, there's no English other than the website here, Ju Audio, Z H U Audio. Um, I'll put a link in the description. You can <laughs> you can read the name for yourself. Um, but anyway, so this is uh, this was recommended to me by a friend, and uh, he reached out to the manufacturer and had it sent over to me. Uh, now, Ju Audio, they have a um, uh, AliExpress page and they have like different IMs, but this is their own IM. Now there are two different versions. Um, there was a previous version and then the 2022 version, which I guess they just changed the tuning a little bit. Um, so this is the 2022 version. Now um, we're going to get started uh, by checking out the um, packaging, accessories, all that stuff, and then we'll get into the uh, sound impressions, and then finally we'll we'll do a graph and a teardown. Um, these are two dynamic drivers. Okay, so they're similar similar to the uh, BGVP uh, scale, um, but they sound better. <laughs> okay, so these are these are not on the same same level. These are definitely better than the um, scale, and they are similar to the Magosi um, V2. I think it is. Um, Magosi has their own sort of dual DD IM. Um, I have not heard those, so I have no idea how they compare. Um, but these are interesting in the fact that they use a um, special, not special, but I guess like proprietary uh, LCP driver that I haven't seen before. Um, it could just be branded for them specifically. Um, but it looks the quality everything looks different than than anything I've seen so I think it's their own in-house driver They have had a special relationship with a factory and had it manufactured just for them um, And then there's also a um, another driver as well, which I think is just a normal PET But it's two dynamic drivers So a 10 millimeter and a 6 millimeter the 10 millimeter is the LCP and the 6 millimeters the the PET or, or whatever it is um, So we'll take a look on the box here uh, so we got a uh, Two dynamic drivers. We got electronic crossover here, um, silver, silver plated wire. Uh, it's got a microphone. It's got uh, different sets of ear tips, and it is MMCX. So for any of you who are not fans of MMCX, I'm sorry, but that's what these use. Um, it's 110 dB uh, sensitivity. Total harmonic distortion is less than 1% at 1 kilohertz. Not sure about that, but okay. Uh, apparently it's 16 ohms at 1 kilohertz. It's good that they add that, so the DC impedance will be a little bit, excuse me, a little bit different. And then the connector type is MMCX. Um, and then for anybody interested, there is their website there. It's juaudio.com. And... It's a it's a nice box, rather nice box. It's wrapped. Uh, it's got some birds on there, some mountains, um, a lot of Chinese writing. I'm sorry, but I do not can't read Chinese. Um, and then we have the earphones themselves. Now these are supposed to be like a, a like a marble texture. They they are just resin, but they have like this marble kind of texture to them. Um, they look pretty nice, nice looking. Cables decent. Um, kind of ripped that, sorry guys. But uh, we'll get into the accessories and everything. But these are the earphones themselves. So we'll pull them out of the box here. And let me just remove the wire. So we'll get these out. And we'll put them off to the side. And we'll just grab the accessories here real quick. And there's a couple things here. Uh, it's got their QQ and a bunch of other things in there um, if you want to contact them. And then we have our little box here, a little package with a case inside it looks like. Alright, so that's that. So here's the case, small, lightweight, you know, just simple case, perfectly adequate. I actually like these cases because you can fit them in your pocket. Um, and inside, we have a nice little surprise here. So we got a few different ear tips. 
So we have a set of foams and a little container to keep them clean, uh, which is cool to see. I like these containers because I can stash drivers and stuff in them. Uh, if you smoke, <laughs> maybe put your drugs in them. <laughs> anyway, um, and then we have a couple different silicone tips here. This is just for the cable. I'll put that up in there. And we also have a clip for the cable as well. So we have two different types of tips. We've got, looks like some kind of narrow bore or just regular kind of like KB07 type tips and then we have our wide bore I call these like donut style so just um, pretty generic tips and then we have our foam tips here now for my listening impressions I am not going to use those I'm going to go to my favorite my personal favorite which are the uh, TRNT tips I absolutely love the TRNT tips anyway so these are the earphones, uh, MMCX, so it's kind of fiddly. Now let's talk about MMCX for a second. Um, the reason why I do not like this connector is it has um, very few uh, insertion cycles. So unfortunately you can only swap out the connector so many times before it begins to wear um, and loosens up. Um, also, the connector in the very center is very tiny, the little conductor there, um, and is easily bent um, or manipulated, and you lose connection. Um, it's not, and, and also it, it swivels, so then you gotta go to try to put them in your ear, and you have to swivel them around, and it's just kind of a pain in the butt, so not a big fan of MMCX. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure there's many other people. Um, but the the cable itself is relatively decent. Now the ear hooks are pretty huge. Those are big ear hooks and it's mainly due to this connector here. So these are going to stick out a bunch. And you might look kind of funny wearing them. But that's what we got. So, so anyway, cable's decent but I'm not a big fan of the ear hooks. Now there is a chin cinch. It is very functional. It feels nice. There's a little bit of resistance on it. Got the little Y splitter there. Um, and then we have a straight end 3.5 with a metal with a um, metal end. Uh, if we take a closer look at the earphones inside, we'll see the 10 millimeter uh, LCP dynamic. It has this uh, Chinese writing on the edge okay and then we have a six millimeter here which is like the uh, PET or probably mylar because it looks a little blurry so it might be mylar um, there is no dampener on the front only a uh, like a screen or not really a mesh but it's a, like a stamped steel plate um, and we have our little crossover board or a little frequency divider right there. Um, overall build quality seems pretty decent. Um, seems on par with, with any other manufacturer. So so build quality looks good. We also have their little uh, musical emblem right there. You can see the little music note. Uh, so that's a nice little touch. And like I said, the face plates look like um, like marble. So they do have a, a very nice appearance. Uh, they do look pretty good. So overall, appearance, uh, aesthetics are A+. Plus. Um, accessories are decent. I, oh, I, so I didn't mention the price. So um, I can only find these on AliExpress. I'm not. I'm sure they're they're available elsewhere, but on AliExpress they are twenty eight dollars. So twenty eight dollars gets you the earphones, the cable. It's a standard cable. It's nothing, nothing special, but but it is a decent cable. And then you get the um, the case and the single foam uh, ear tips, the single pair of foam ear tips, and the uh, six sets of silicone ear tips. So, so that is the package. And let's get to the listening impressions. All right, today's listening session again is the the source is going to be my Hi uh S3 Pro. I've actually really been liking this thing lately. I've been using it more and more, um, and I like the sound quality. Um, 
And the track for today is going to be Grace Kelly by Mika. All right, so we are going to give these a listen. Okay. Oh man. Um that was much much worse than I remembered. Um so <laughs> um maybe these are not better than the scale. Uh what are you get out of here, dude. So anyway, um wow, that was um intense. So uh bass quality, let's start with the bass. Uh bass quality is not bad. Sounds Pretty decent, got a little bit of punch to it, um, but it's kind of recessed a little bit. I mean, it's, it's how do I say it? It's good overall, like volume-wise, um, texture sounds good, it's got enough definition, enough punch to it, sounds okay. Um, but it's overpowered by the mids, extremely overpowered by the mids. Um, the... The lower mids, uh, so like the, the lower pina gain region, and we'll, I'll show it on the graph here because I'm sure it'll show up, but um, the lower like pina gain region, you know, one, two, three kilohertz is, is fine. I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm satisfied. Um, the quality of the mids is not bad. Sounds good. But once you start getting into six, seven, probably around actually maybe lower than that it might be like four or five kilohertz holy cow um very very loud very uh nasally it, it makes everything sound nasally um makes it there's uh sibilance in there uh sounds kind of like harsh and sibilant um like i said nasally harsh sibilant uh the other than that um, and there, there's a good amount of treble roll off. The extension is not there. Um, a lot of these IMs, in, in my last video we went over the uh, MT1, a lot of these cheaper earphones, the, the tuning or the diaphragms or whatever, maybe they just don't know what they're doing. Um, <clears throat> but there's just no extension, and that's where you get your fidelity from. Um, and, and not to beat a dead horse, but this is what I'm getting back to. So I built these. These are my um, Aphex uh, prototype version 2. Um, these things, whoops, got a long hair there. These things have killer extension, so it's possible. These are just generic shells. These are universal shells, um, same same as you know these, pretty much just you know different layout, and one driver instead of two, um, and um, and yeah, I mean the, the sound quality, the difference is just night and day. There's no competition whatsoever. Um, so yeah, so I, I I'm I'm good on these. Um, the so like I said, the the triple's kind of dark, kind of recessed. Um, there's a hefty amount of roll off, um, but the majority of it is just that that peak man. That that I don't know five k or seven k somewhere somewhere around there. It could be as low as four uh, or four and a half. Not not four, but anyway, it is just overpowering. Makes everything sound nasally. Um, just overbearing. The the depth is decent. There's decent depth. Um, the width is okay. The, these have a slight channel imbalance. The left side has more bass than the right. Um, the the mids and treble and everything are both even um, when it comes to the the smaller driver. But with the larger driver, um, there is a slight channel imbalance. It's not the worst I've heard. Um, but it is slightly skewed to the left. Um, and so what that does is that kind of uh, skews the imaging and it makes it hard to tell what's going on in the mix, in the stage, like as far as with the depth and everything goes. And that, that shoutiness, that, um, that, that sibilance and that uh, you know 4 to 7k peak or whatever, 5 to 7k peak, it just makes everything just imperceivable it's just noise so unfortunately uh tonality i'm gonna give these a uh a d minus <laughs> 
Um, technicalities, I'm going to give them a C, C plus. Um, but yeah, tonality, just not there. Not very good. Um, it can be remedied uh, with dampeners. I actually did have these on uh, before I broke them out of the box. They've been sitting for about a month or so. But I did have these these dampeners on the IMs. If I can get them on. There we go. So I did have it like that. Um, and I assume that was <laughs> my way of making them better. And apparently the the gentleman who recommended them to me, uh, he had put dampeners on too. And I guess he had forgotten about it. Um, but yeah, they need them. Oh boy, do they need them. So let's get into the graph and then we'll tear these puppies apart. All right, guys. Again, forgive the potato cam. But here's what we're working with. So this is the uh, Jing Hong, I think it is. The Zhu Audio. Um, yeah, it's it's not good. Um, the base area looks fine. The rough is a little, little bit wide, um, but it doesn't sound too muddy to me. Um, I guess they're, I don't know. It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't. It, it could be better, of course, but it doesn't sound bad. It's not super muddy or anything. Um, the real area is right here, and so yeah, my last guess was correct. It's about 4.8 kilohertz so a little bit over 4.5 um, it is 4.8 and that is the loudest peak the second loudest peak um, is part of our pina gain and that's around 2.7 which is fine um, and yeah so the pina gains a little weird uh, kind of rises a little little early or a little weird I'm not sure how to explain it um, but vocals sound okay, but this area here is just rough. Um, this is the worst of the worst. Um, yeah, so we have that 4.8k region where, uh, it just kills your ears. And, uh, and then we have another peak here. I don't think this is a coupler peak. It could be, but it's about 8 kilohertz, so it could be a coupler peak. Um, but yeah, you'll notice there's a big di abrupt dip after this uh, 4.8k peak. So really what's happening is you're losing out on all this resolution, all this detail here in this little crevice, in this little peak here. And you're being blasted by by mids. And this the 4k is not the best place for a mid peak. Um, you, you can get some sharpness and stuff. I, when I was younger, I used to have a big problem with 4K um, when I was doing a lot of engineering work, and I would always do my best to cut down on 4K because that was like the problem point for me. Um, now that I'm older, it's not as bad, I guess. I don't know. Hearing these earphones just like opened up a whole new world for me, um, a world of pain. But um, But yeah, so anyway, so did not like that. And then uneven treble, so you're losing detail here, regains a little bit of energy, and then is just a dead drop after 10k. There is no energy, no extension, no nothing, just roll off, um, so there is no treble. So unfortunately, I cannot recommend these. Um, they're just not good. Not for 30 bucks, not for 20 bucks, not for 10 bucks. Um, there's better out there. Um. All right, so it's very sad to say, but unfortunately, I do not like these. I did not like these. Um, I'm not going to save them, but we will take a look at this unique driver because I think it has some potential. Um, I have not seen an LCP driver like this before, and I will be saving these drivers. Because they look interesting. So bear with me while I destroy these shells. And I will be right back. Alright guys. So. Um, props to to the, the people that made this IM. Um, this is some of the hardest plastic I have destroyed in my life. So these things are built very well. So I will give the build quality 
uh, probably a, a A or B grade. Um, very good build quality. Uh, the 10 millimeter LCP uh, looks a decent quality. Um, I kind of boogered it up right there, but it shouldn't affect the sound. Um, this is very similar to the LCP. Uh, let me see if I have it somewhere. So it's very similar to these drivers that I've been using. Um, I believe it's the same manufacturer. And these are actually pretty good drivers. Um, they're not very well resolving, but they're decent quality drivers. This is the same driver that was in the original um, Shimon Lee. Okay, so this is the OG Shimon Lee driver. But anyway, so same company. Um, the LCP driver is decent quality, um, but they skimped on this uh, six millimeter here. It is a mylar, uh, and this is unfortunately the absolute cheapest driver you can use. Um, these are not not good drivers to be using for high frequency drivers. Um, it's just a big big no no. Um, so yeah, so unfortunately that was the mistake. Uh, they chose the wrong driver, um, they chose poorly, and uh, and that is the issue there. But um, there is still a lot of potential in this LCP driver, so I will be continuing my uh, research efforts on these because I have not had uh, this exact driver in LCP. Um, so yeah, so I will be testing that out. But yeah, so that is pretty much it, guys. Uh, I made a bit of a mess here. But yeah, so I will leave a link just in case you want to suffer. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, I cannot recommend these in good faith. Um, I do not like them. I have a very strong allergy to uh, shouty, sibilant, harsh sound. Um, and that 4.8K peak is a big, big no-no in my book. Um, so yeah, so not recommending these. Um, but I will still leave a link if you guys want to check them out. Because the build quality is decent. The driver, uh, at least the 10mm LCP, appears to be decent. Um, so if you want to harvest some drivers out of them and get some parts or something, you know... 28 bucks it's not too bad you can get a case and stuff with it so um considering that these are like almost 30 bucks or something on aliexpress i mean you can get them for cheaper i can get a 10 pack for 25 bucks um but you have to know the right the right seller so anyway guys i will catch you later peace